The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Family Theater, starring Margaret Sullivan and Van Heflin, with Donald Crisp as your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening. This is Donald Crisp. Since I'm your host this evening, perhaps I ought to tell you what you to expect in the next half hour. I'd better begin by telling you that this program, Family Theatre, got its name because it's dedicated to your family. You know the word family can mean a lot of things. It can mean bitterness and struggle, or it can mean love and companionship, and all the most wonderful things in the world. Now, all of us who are part of the family theater, and that includes so many of you who listen, well, we feel that prayer, family prayer, can make the difference between an unhappy and a happy home. We have a simple conviction. A family that prays together stays together. Well, now you know why we call this program the family theater. But that doesn't mean you can expect a lot of preaching. Far from it. Tonight you can expect some mighty fine entertainment. You'll hear an original story by Walter Newman with a splendid cast. So let's listen to the play, I Give You Maggie, starring Margaret Sullivan and Van Heflin. The scene of our play opens in New York City on an October afternoon, in the living room of a penthouse overlooking Central Park. A party is being held in honor of a young novelist, Tom Paget. Two women, Mrs. Paget and Daphne Lewis, literary editor, are leaving the crowded room. Yeah, that's better. Have you ever heard anything noisier than a literary cocktail party, Mrs. Paget? Well, this is the first I ever attended. Really? Here. You sit here on the couch, and I'll take this armchair. Thank you. Cigarette? Oh, no, thank you, Miss... Oh, I'm sorry. Not at all. Uh, Daphne Lewis, oh, Mrs. Yes. Paget, Assistant literary editor of The Times. Yes, of course. I don't usually do this sort of thing, but we're so delighted with your husband's work that I thought it might make a rather good column for next Sunday if I interviewed you. The woman behind the author, you know, that sort of thing. I'm afraid it won't be very interesting. Oh, darling, of course it will. Oh, frankly, it's not my personal dish of tea. Comfortable? Oh, yes. Ready? No, wait. Let me get a pencil out of my... There. Now, when did you and Tommy marry, Mrs. Paget? Maggie, sit down. You're pacing a groove right across the living room. Is my mouth on straight now? You look adorable. Relax. It's ten past eight, Maggie. Does he always keep you waiting like this? Oh, let her alone, Mama. Stop picking on her. Mona, you be quiet. Maggie, what your mother and I can't understand is why you haven't had him up to the house before. After all, you've known him, uh, how long? Uh, Three months? Four months? I don't like for you to be going out with a young man we've never seen and don't know anything about. Well, he was supposed to have come here several times. Maggie. But something... Is he serious? Oh, well, you'll see, Mama. What do you mean, I'll see? Maggie. There he is. I tell you, I don't like it, Bertha. Young girl ought to bring her boyfriends around so her parents Shh. can see. Harry. Hmm. Tom, my father, and my mother. Mrs. Bannon. How do you do? Mr. Bannon. Mm-hmm. Evening, Tom. My sister, Nona. Nona. Hello. Harry. Oh, here, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. sit, sit down, Tom, sit down. Uh, we have to go. Uh, well, he can sit down for a minute, can't he? Uh, go ahead, Tom, sit down. Yeah, now. Uh, Maggie, Maggie, te- tells- <laughs> uh, Maggie tells us you've uh, knocked around a lot. Some. Well, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, what have you done, Tom? Nothing very much. Oh, you have, too. He's been all over and done everything. Well, it's fine, fine. Uh, go ahead, we'd like to hear. Well, I ran away from an orphanage about... 
12 years ago. When I was 14, I was a road kid for three years. Uh, road kid? Yeah, it's a young hobo. Rode the rods and boxcars all over this country and Canada. Slept under bridges, begged from door to door. <laughs> I've been jailed as bum 20 or 30 times. Hmm. And what else? Oh, not much of anything. Well, he was a cowhand in Wyoming until he broke a leg bulldozing. Dozing, not then... dazing. Uh... Oh, dozing. And then he was a pearl diver in a beanery. That means dishwasher. And a lumberjack and a miner. And he did a hitch with the Marines and all like that. Hmm. Uh, what are you doing now? Just sitting here. <laughs> no, no, I, I oh, mean... Uh... Oh, well, I read a lot. That's how I met Maggie at the library. I guess she told you that, though. I'm trying to learn how to write. I think I'm going to be a writer. I suppose you've put aside a lot of money to keep you going until you begin to sell your stories. Mrs. Banner, I have a personal fortune of exactly four dollars. It's not, um, not very much, is it? No. In fact, after I take Maggie out for a walk tonight and buy her a soda, well, I'll have just about enough left for a marriage license in the morning. What? Maggie! Well, that's all right with you, though, isn't it, Maggie? I haven't made a mistake, have I? No, Tom. You haven't made a mistake. But what are you going to live on? Well, that, that will be a problem. I make 35 a week. Oh, there now, you see, we can easily manage on that, Mrs. Banner. You're going to let her support uh, you? Hold it, Bertha, hold it. Maggie, look, you're dead set on this. Dead set, Papa. Harry, you Bertha. can't... Now, look, you two. You hardly know each other. No matter how much you think you love each other, you can't live on love. So I offer this. Tom, if you'll come around to my office, I'll speak to the chief. And I'm sure we can slide you into one of the departments. Then, after a while, when you've saved a little money... Well, that's a very kind offer, Mr. Banner, but it would be just a waste of time for me. A waste of time to make a living for your wife? Well, it's a waste of time for a writer to do anything but write. Look, if you object to Maggie's working, why don't you give us some money? Give you? Please call it a business investment, Papa. Maggie, you're not going to marry this... Well, we are going to be married, Mr. Bannon. Now, just start all of your thinking from that premise. Maggie. No, Papa. We're going to be married. Going against us, eh? Oh, no, not against you, Papa. Just in a different direction. If you marry this... this tramp, you can get out of this house tonight and stay out. Papa. No, I mean it. Give me your hand, Tom. I'm all, all shaky. Here, kid. Squeeze it, squeeze hard. You ready, Maggie? Ready, Tom. Now, when did you and Tommy marry, Mrs. Paget? July 17th, 1937. Uh-huh, I see. And how did it come about? Well, he just asked me, and I said yes. How unusual. <laughs> Oh, don't mind me. So you married a budding genius. Was it difficult at first? How did you find it? Bitter? Sweet? Oh. Maggie? Yes? I'm finished for the day. Supper ready? Ready? It's been on the table for three hours. Where are you, kid? In the closet? No, here, in the kitchenette. You managed to disappear in a one-room apartment or something <laughs> I... Oh, look, honey, I'm sorry about supper. You didn't wait for me, did you? Of course I waited for you. Well, you should have eaten. What's a cake and candles for? Is it my birthday? No, it's not your birthday. Oh, Tom, you've forgotten. Forgotten? Oh, no, 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 I didn't forget. Yes, you did. Our first anniversary, no, you forgot. I, I didn't forget, baby. Honestly, I've got a present for you. In my pocket. Now, wait just a second. Here, take it. What is it? No, it's a poem. You can read it. Can you read my writing? For Maggie on our first wedding anniversary. Now, go ahead, read it. <laughs> if I could write the beauty of your eyes... And in fresh numbers, number all your graces. The age to come would say this port lies. Such heavenly touches, near touched earthly faces. You like it? Like it. Oh, Tom, it's beautiful. It's better than Shakespeare. It is Shakespeare. No. I didn't have time to compose one, so I just copied it. <laughs> it says what I mean, anyway. It's the nicest present I ever had. Well, then, give me a kiss. Oh, Maggie, you're a kissable wench. I think I'll renew my option on you for another year. Oh, Tom, I'm so happy. Yeah, me too, baby. 
You know, I turned out about ten pages today, and that you remember that character I told you about last night, Jonesy? Well, he's really beginning to come alive. You know, each week it gets better and better. Do you realize we'll be on our vacation this time next week? Our first vacation together? One week of it. One week of no subway and no office, no ironing, no dishes. Oh, Maggie, look, I'm not simply to tell toss you, uh, our $40 into the hotel owner's lap, and in return he gives us seven days of paradise. Well, there's no $40 days anymore. Of... What? Well, we, we don't have $40. We only have 12 But we... I don't understand. Well, uh, after you left for the office this morning, I uh, broke the typewriter, and the man at the shop said it had cost $18 to fix. It'd take about ten days, and I rented the typewriter I'm using now for a buck a day. Eighteen plus ten equals twenty-eight. Twenty-eight from forty leaves. No, no vacation. No vacation? No. Well, couldn't you have used a pencil? Oh, Maggie, now don't. No. Oh, don't, please. <laughs> Maggie, listen. Uh, look, someday, pretty soon, maybe I'll, I'll finish the book and we'll sell it for a barrel of money and then we'll head for the beach at Acapulco or even Rio and, and we'll, we'll stay not just seven days, but seven months or as long as you like and then when we come back... We'll... Oh, Maggie, now don't cry, please. Come on, now, here. Blow. I know you've looked forward to this vacation. I, I know how it is. Maggie, uh... hey, look. Now, look, when that Pulitzer Prize Committee rewards me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to propose this toast. Ladies and gentlemen, in accepting this award for literature, I do not accept it for myself, but for the person who really deserves all the credit accruing to my book. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Maggie. <laughs> Colton Publishing House for you. What? What does it say? Hurry. Wait a minute. It says, uh... Oh, look, here, you, you read it. Look, I'm, I'm too nervous. I couldn't... Your Enchanted Hill huh? was one of the most unusual novels we've ever read. Tom! Oh, go on, go on, Maggie. Frankly, we consider it too advanced for present taste. And so on, and so on. And so on. I'm going for a walk. Oh, look, I'm all right, baby, honest. I just I just feel like walking, so... They're idiots. It doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. Well, I'll see you soon. Please, Tom, let me go with you. Please, Tom. Maggie. Maggie, where are you? In here, fixing the light cord. Guess what? What? What is it? Can anybody hear us? No, what is it? Don't tease me. I was walking down the block just now. Yes. And all of a sudden, down at my feet, I saw... What? What? This, this. A dollar bill. You found it? That's wonderful. I bet you were beginning to think I never would be a breadwinner. Well, Mrs. Padgett, instead of walking around the park this afternoon as we do every Sunday, we're going to observe the rites of spring. With a dollar? I'm afraid you lack creative vision. When I look at this dollar, do you know what I see? George Washington's picture. I see two round trips to Coney Island, 20 cents. Two buck beers, 20 cents. Two hot dogs, widow without mustard, 20 cents. And two rides on the merry-go-round, 20 cents. That's only 80 cents. What about the other 20? Philanthropy. The other 20 cents goes back to the sidewalk for the appeasement of tastes far less luxurious than ours. <laughs> Madam, grab your hat and let us away. Was it difficult at first? How did you find it? Bitter? Sweet? Oh, a little of both, I guess. Yes, a little of both. <laughs> My leading questions don't seem to lead anywhere, do they? Never mind. And all this while, Tommy just kept plugging away at his writing? Yes, that's right. Except for one period. Except for one period. When was that? Doctor, I'd like to know the truth. Mrs. Paget, I'll give it to you straight from the shoulder if you think you can take it. I can take it. Tuberculosis. Now, wait. We've caught it in time, I think. I know definitely after studying the x-rays, but I think we've caught it in time. Now, Mrs. Padgett, what was your husband's daily routine? Well, he was up at 5.30 every morning, no matter what time we went to bed. Mm -hmm. He was at his desk by 6. He worked straight through until 8, 9 o'clock at night, sometimes later. How about his diet? Well, coffee for breakfast, no lunch. As large a supper as I could make him take. Uh -huh. And this has been going on for how long? Ever since we were married. Three years. 
Well, Mrs. Padgett, your husband will have to go away for a while. How long? Two or three years. Maybe longer. May I go in to see him, Doctor? Well, he's sleeping. I just want to look at him. All right. Don't let him talk too much if he wakes up. Know that you, kid? Shh. You're not to talk. The doc tell you? Yes. Well, we've been hit a pretty low blow. I know. Yeah, he wants me to go to Arizona. Listen, baby. Get a divorce. Tom. No, I mean it. I, I'm being objective, not noble. We've had the top of the bottle. Don't tie yourself to me. Stop this nonsense, Tom. Stop it at once. No, listen. Don't don't let sentimentality trip you up. That's where most people go wrong. You have to be hard and a little bit ruthless. If I'd let sentimentality get in my way, I'd have taken a job instead of writing. I'm not listening. Well, you've got to listen, Maggie. I know you're thinking that I'll be alone in a sanitarium or something, but, kid, look, I, I've been alone most of my life, and I'm used to it. I never expected anything else. The times we've had together, well, that that's just been so much gravy for me. I, I never... It's been expe- gravy for you, has it? Well, what about me? You're used to being alone. Do you think... Do you think for one minute I could live without you? I couldn't. I'd die. Powers of darkness, nameless fears. <laughs> I give you Maggie... And besides, that was a very hammy renunciation scene. Except for one period. When was that? During the war, he was ill. Tuberculosis. Was he in a sanitarium? Yes, in Tucson, Arizona. And you? Oh, I got a job at an army air base near him. I was allowed to see him twice a month. One of the officers used to drive me to town. Was this officer a friend... Well, Maggie, this is the last time I'll be driving you to Tucson. Spence, shipping out? Uh huh. My squadron leaves tomorrow. Oh, Spence. Uh, there's something I want to say to you. No. Don't look at me. Look straight ahead. Maggie, I've been wondering if you know I'm in love with you. Very much in love with you. Don't, Spence. Can't help it. I'm not the suffer in silence type. Spence, please. I think I've been in love with you ever since I reported for duty here and first saw you in the Colonel's office. Maggie, I'm going to make it short. I want you to get a divorce and marry me. We can be married by proxy no matter where they send me, and I'll be back someday. No, Spence. Face facts. They're brutal, but they must be faced. Your husband is an invalid. He's been in the sanitarium how long? Two years? Three? He may be there ten more, and where does that leave you? You see him only twice a month. You can't even kiss him. No, Spence. Sure? Sure. Well, that's that, then. That's all the ammo on my clip. You know something? Sick as your husband is and healthy as I am, if I could change places with him, I'd do it in a second. And I'd think I'd gotten the best of the bargain. Was this officer a friend? Oh, yes, a good friend. How long was Tommy ill? Almost four years. When did he meet Felice Harrow? Oh, that was after we came back. Mm. That was a lucky break, wasn't it? Maggie Felice was wonderful. She thought the book was the best she'd ever read by a modern writer, and she's willing to devote all of her time to getting it published. Maggie, she's, she's just the sort of a literary agent I've been dreaming about. Really? What's she like? Felice, oh, I don't know. She's in her late 20s, I'd say. Smart as a whip. There lots of style. You know. Pretty? Oh, yes, sure. Enormously so. Maggie, I feel tremendously set up about this whole thing. Oh, I almost forgotten. I'm, I'm going to have dinner at her place. We're going to talk over some rewrites. Oh, yeah. so? Well, now, mind you, I don't agree with all of them, but she's right about two or three of them. She's a smart girl. Look, uh, pick out a tie for me, will you, huh, baby? I'll wait up for you. I want to hear all about it. No, you better not. I may be pretty late, and you know how I can talk when I have a new audience. I'm going to take a shower and a shave. Hey, hey, look, do we have any money? I have a $5 bill. Oh, that's well. We'll put it in my trousers. Hey, shall I take her some candy? Well, that might be nice. Yeah. Well, look, if she calls, we'll tell her I'll be there in no time not to worry about it, huh? Yes, I will. That was a lucky break, wasn't it? Yes, for both of them. Very attractive, isn't she? Yes, very. I think personal appearance is so important, don't you? Maggie, you 
you look awful. I do. Awful. Well, you used to be such a pretty girl, too. You ought to be spanked for letting yourself run to seed like this. Oh, Nona, have I run to seed? Well, I don't mean you're hobbling around in slippers and an old wrapper, but... Well, you ought to look more chic. Look at the lines in your face. How old are you now? Thirty-one? You know how old you look? No, how old? Thirty-one. That's disgraceful. Well, you should look at least five years younger than thirty-one, and at forty-one you should... All right, all right, you've made your point. Where's Tom this evening? With Felice, I think. He's seeing a lot of her, isn't he? Why shouldn't he? She's his agent. Of course. Any news on the book? No, not yet, but Felice keeps trying. I'll bet she does at that. I think personal appearance is so important, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Did they accept the book for publication as soon as they read it? No, the Colonial Press was a new outfit. They didn't have enough money. That must have been a trying time. It was. We had to raise $2,500. Did you borrow from friends? Do no one says for you to go right in, Mrs. Padgett? Thank you. Maggie. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Spence. Maggie, I'm... (laughs) Why didn't you write? Oh, I kept in touch with you through the newspapers. Captain Nolan on this island, Major Nolan on that one. I kept in touch. Did you really? Maggie, are you, uh, is Tom... Completely cured. I see. And you and he are still... Still married. And in love? And uh, in love? Spence, look. I think Tom wants out. He hasn't said anything, but... Well, he's going to be a famous man, Spence, and I don't seem to fit into his life anymore. You know that line about successful writers and the women they happened to marry when they were young? Who is she, Maggie? Felice Harrell, Tom's agent. She's young and smart and literary, just as Tom is, and I'm sorry I didn't come here to let my heart out. I came to ask you for $2,500. $2,500? Yes, look, Spence, Felice can get Tom's book published if he can put up that amount. He's worked so hard for so long. It's a wonderful book and he deserves to be... What? Shifting sands. I've been aware of it ever since I got back into civilian life. Everyone changes. Nothing's the same as when you last saw it. $2,500? All right. I'll give you $2,500 on one condition. That you divorce Tom and marry me. Divorce? Now, don't stop to think. Quick, what do you say? No. Oh, I knew it. Did I say everyone changes? No, I take it back. Everyone except Maggie. Still the fighter, eh, Maggie? Spence, You want to know something? If you said yes, you'd come no closer to 2,500 of my dollars than any other stranger. But you're no stranger, are you? Still the Maggie I remembered. Wobbly on your feet. Still punching her. Spence, you... Yeah? I'm the guy who's delighted to find one constant in a world of change. Maggie... I love you more than ever. May I give you a kiss? (laughs) Well, that's the best offer I've had today. Did you borrow from friends? Something like that. And so the book was published and the rest is history. Yes, that's right. Well, I guess that's about all. Didn't hurt, did it? Well, I told you it wouldn't be very interesting. Almost everything concerning a Pulitzer Prize winner is interesting. It'll make a paragraph anyway. I'm terribly glad for Tommy and Felice. There aren't two nicer people in the literary game. Tommy's so good-looking. Mrs. Paget, may I say something? Yes. Well, if I were you and had a husband as attractive as Tommy... Oh, never mind. It's none of my business. Shall we go back to the party? I'd like to stay here for a moment, if you don't mind. I want to fix my hair. See you soon. You used to be such a pretty girl. Felice is wonderful, smart as a whip, lots of style. How old are you now? Thirty-one. You used to be such a pretty girl. I'm having dinner with Felice. Don't wait up for me. You used to be such a pretty girl. You mustn't let sentimentality trip you up. That's where people go wrong. You have to be hard. You used to be such a pretty girl. (laughs) Maggie? Hey, what is it, baby? What's happened? Uh, I, I was just looking in the mirror... I found a gray hair. Oh, Tom. Tom, I'm not young and pretty anymore. I'm not, am I, Tom? No, Maggie. You're not pretty anymore. (laughs) Merely beautiful. No. 
face is beginning to line. There's a line between your eyebrows that wasn't there when we first got married. <laughs> There's one I saw form when my first book was rejected. Here's another that was etched in while I was sick. Oh, there are several lines, to say nothing of that one gray hair. <laughs> Maggie, you imbecile. I didn't marry you because you were pretty. There are thousands and thousands of pretty girls. You see them in the ads or gallivanting about in movies. Chorus lines and colleges are filled with them. Felice is a pretty girl. But you're beautiful. All the loveliness I saw deep down inside of you when we first met is pushing its way out. I say you're beautiful. Maybe I'm prejudiced, but you see, I, I happen to be in love with you. There now. Come on, blow. Now take my hand. Squeeze it. Squeeze hard, kid. You ready, Maggie? Ready, Tom. This is Donald Crisp speaking again. And thanking Van Heflin and Margaret Sullivan for such delightful performances. You know, if we could all have one wish, and that wish could be granted, I wonder what we would wish for. Happiness, probably. Of course, you'll always find people who say that it's pretty hard nowadays to have a happy family. It must be hard. Look at all the divorces. And it's pretty hard to bring up boys and girls we can be proud of. Look at all the cases of delinquency. No argument. Certainly it's hard to maintain a happy family. Certainly it's hard to bring up children properly. As a matter of fact, the job's apt to be too hard for even the best of parents. But you don't have to do it alone. You can get help. The most powerful help a man can ask for. But remember, you've got to ask for it. Ask and ye shall receive. Yes, ask God for his help. Pray. Pray with your children that God will help your family. You are never so unimportant that God won't listen and help you. Don't forget this. A family that prays together stays together. You'll never know how much prayer will do until you say one. Why not say one tonight? Before saying goodnight, I want to express our thanks to all of you who have helped make this program possible. Thanks also to Fred Mackay for directing our play tonight. To our producer, Bob Longnecker. Next week, our stars on the Family Theatre will be Robert Young, Roddy McDowell, and J. Carroll Nash. This is Donald Crisp saying goodnight all. This series of the Family Theater is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. is the Mutual Broadcasting System.